The sensor is used to monitor the changes in the environment and gives out electrical signal. While actuators does the opposite, it changes an electrical signal into physical actions. Examples of sensors are ultrasonic sensor, camera, accelerometer, microphone, and examples of actuators are LED, lasers, loudspeakers, solenoid motors, controllers, and the rest of it. In some projects, sensors and actuators can actually rely on each other to perform a particular task. Hello everyone, welcome to this class. We'll be working with um, basic analog input sensors. So we'll be taking readings from various sensors, such as your temperature sensors and your photoelectric sensors. We we'll try to create a basic um, project, get data from the sensors and then use those data to work on some actuators. So let's jump right in. So first you open your Tinkercad dashboard, you click on create new circuit. You also don't have this for it to load up your workspace so you can use it. Our workspace is loaded, so it's time for us to drag out our components. First component so you pull out there is the Arduino Uno R3. Okay, so next thing we drag out uh, our breadboard small. Okay, it just simply works when whenever you um whenever the temperature of the room is actually very high, the buzzer just beeps out and sends an alarm so someone can cross your attention. So we look for um, our temperature sensor. So we have a temperature sensor here, the LM36. So we drag out the temperature sensor. Temperature sensor has uh, three pins, the first one being the power pin, second one being the V-out, and the last one being the ground. The power pin sends in 5 volt power to the temperature sensor. The V out pin gives um, out data from the sensor to the Arduino. Then the ground pin just completes the circuit to the negative ground value. So place that on our breadboard. Then we, uh, we, we drag a wire from the plus angle of the breadboard to Five V on the Arduino, change that wire to black, to red, causing the price power. And then the minus side, you drag a wire and connect it to the G and D pin, which is ground and it will be black. Okay. All right. So. The first um, column for the power pin, so find any of the MC who connected to that column where the power pin is, we drag our wire, and then we connect it to to the positive rail because that's where really our five volts is connected to. So we change our column here yeah, to red. So the next one, which is the middle pin, which is the V out pin, we have to connect that to an analog input pin. So we click inside an empty hole on that same hole connected to the V out pin and connect that to analog input A0. Turn the color of that pin to SA orange because that sounds for data. It helps in transferring data from the sensor to the Arduino. So now the last one, the last pin column, which is the GND, find an empty hole, click inside, drag out a wire, and then connect it to the minus rail of 
the bottom part of the breadboard. I will change the color to black based on how it's ground. Okay, so now it's time for us to um, put in our buzzer. So drag your buzzer, place it on the breadboard. Okay, you know there are two parts of the buzzer, the positive and the negative. So the the column which is connected to the positive, you click on any of the empty holes, drag out the wire, and connect it to a digital pin in that you know. So let's say digital pin six. So I'm connecting to digital pin six, and that wire is going to be my red wire. It's going to be served for both the data and power. So now the last role, so make sure it's on the same role. So just always keep note of me hovering over that particular column and make sure that negative or positive pin or whatever pin you want to connect is on that role. So connect my wire there, click on it to break and then connect it to the minus wheel at the bottom part of the breadboard. So to connect all my components to one to one particular GND and one particular five volts. Okay, um, so we're done with the wiring for the project. It's time for us to move to the coding aspects. We're writing our code on C. So this is the void setup and the void loop. Um, we just need to remove the delay in here. Okay, now at the top of the voice setup and voice loop, we create uh, a global variable, create some global variables with int data type. So we say int uh, cmp, this is the name of our sensor. And we, the, the value we store is, um, is in pin A0, so A0 as the pin number. All right, next, we are now type in int buzzer. Number of the variable is buzzer. And it stores the pin value of number six. So close the statement. So that's the only two variables you need. So now inside the voice setup, we have to type in the pin mode. What, uh, what are those pins for and what are the status of those pins? So right, we we'll call the function pin mode. Note the camel case. Open and close the brackets. Close the statement to the semicolon. So inside pin mode, we say um C M P, which is the name of our variable, should be an input pin. Okay, so it's an input pin because it's a sensor pin. I'm trying to get data from that sensor pin. So that's why it's an input pin. That's you get in input data from the sensor. So next, we we'll type in P mode function again. And then we will um, type the variable name, which is buzzer. I have to type it correctly. Buzzer. And then this is an output pin because it releases sound. So much people on top of it. So it's an output spin. Um, so we will create uh, a serial communication between the computer and the um, Arduino board. So to do that, we want to display some data. We want to display the data of um, the current temperature on our serial monitor. So to activate that, you have to type in the uh, the you have to call the Object serial, and then you have to call a method which is dot begin. Open a bracket, close the bracket. So begin is a is a function or a method that is inside the serial um, library. So the serial library is automatically inside the Arduino the Arduino software. Whenever you the Arduino software, we're using Tinkercad. The uh, method, the serial method is automatically inside the Arduino. So you just call it whenever time you need it. You don't need to import this, the library anymore. You just call it. So, like I'm calling now serial, and then dot will now call any of the functions inside 
the libraries. So begin is one of the functions. So I say begin, want to start, want to wake up a communication. Then we type the speed of the communication. So it's 9,600. So that's 9,600 bit rates or bot rates. So that's how fast the Arduino communicates with the computer. So this is just for Arduino Uno, Arduino Mega, Arduino Nano, and any other kind of Arduino has their own particular communi um, communication board rates. So that's all for the voice setup. Now inside the void loop. So for inside the void loop, we will say serial, we'll call the serial object again, and then call the dots to bring out the function, which is print. So if serial dots print, Let's say print line because I want to put print a new line. When you see serial dot print, it just prints on the screen. Or when you see serial dot print line, every time you want to call it to be printing a new line, but you see just print, you're printing everything on a very long line to make your your um the data display hard to understand. So but if you're printing on a new line, anytime you want to print to print on a new line, it's easier for you to check out the data it has printed. So inside the print line function, you just um open it to double quotation. Also want to display string value so typing temp temp your double position give a space okay add a semicolon at the end of it so you have to type two double quotes you have to put a double quotes and then type in your temp inside the double quotes so next you put you call the serial make sure your s is in capital letter because an object so your s must be in capital letter so serial dot print so you observe that you're using print line anymore you're using print serial dot print um then you type the uh what you want to print on on the print line function but before we do that we have to create uh, a variable that stores whatever the uh, the Arduino reads from the sensor. So we say int um cm cmp underscore status. So status equals to now call a function analog read so this reads whatever data gets there analog read so that's a built in function we're calling the built in function analog read so whatever is inside the packet to read from that particular pin so it has one one um, argument which is the pin that you want to read from analog pin so we type in um cmp because cmp is a variable that stores the uh pin number we're working with now if you, we've done that now we're now typing this serial dot print so let's print whatever value is stored inside the status on the screen so we can see it so we're just typing the variable name cmp underscore status so you notice that we are not using any your double quotation because it's a variable. You're working with variables, you don't need to put your double quotation. It's just putting the name of the variable and you display it. But you want to display a string, then that's where you put your your double quotes, your double quotation. So and put the semicolon. And we use the if statement to check if it exceeds if this temperature exceeds um this threshold. You should start beeping. So to do that, I will say if to open a and close the bracket. So if uh, cmp underscore status is greater than or equal to, so is greater than or equal to. So if it is greater than or if it's equal to that value. So let's say it's greater than or equal to one hundred and. 
we open a coil brace and close the coil brace. Put our cursor inside the coil brace. Press enter. So don't be confused. Just watch carefully. So inside the coil brace, we now type uh, our commands. So we say um, we now call our buzzer. Then we say digital rights, we call the function digital rights, so we can write to the buzzer pin. We'll close the bracket, semicolon. Then you type in the parameters, which is the pin number. For me, I'm going to use buzzer because I get the variable, and the variable stores the pin number. And the next one is going to be high. So it's higher capital letters. That means whenever it exit out that time, it's going to come high. It's just going to start beeping. Or preferably, I can just type in the function tone. So to give a particular tone when the temperature exceeds that limit. So I can say tone. Tone, tone function takes in three parameters. First, it takes the pin number at the comma. Then it takes in the frequency. So let me say 566. And command them for how many for how long you want that tone to last. So I'm going to use 4,000 milliseconds. Add my semicolon there. Then I come outside this curly brace with my if statement. So I don't type any other conditions or any other functions. So yeah, I put the else. So just in case uh it doesn't meet meet up that uh, particular threshold. I want there should be no sound. So what I do here, I will just type in um digital right. So to turn off turn off the buzzer. So put in buzzer, which is a very clean. Sorry, I'll start that correctly. Comma low. Use a semicolon. And then you type in no tone, you call the no tone function. So the no tone function just simply um, shuts down any tone that's making any noise. So the no tone function accepts one parameter, which is the number of the pin or the um, where the buzzer pin is connected to. I just put in my buzzer variable because it has that information. So M S T M S semicolon. So when I'm done with the code. For my project, so to test run it, I have to click on um, start simulation. Okay, see why uh, you need to always cross check your code properly whenever time you're working with it. So, um, right now you see on your no tone function, it's giving us an error and it's saying um, the error is between 25 and 5. Then it's saying um, the way we wrote our no tone function wasn't correct. So we have to use a capital letter for the tone. So we are using camel case. So we put a capital letter T, then click on start simulation once more. Good, so it's working. All right, so now let's increase. Let's first of all check our serial monitor. So down here is a serial monitor. Just click on serial monitor. Right now it's displaying the temp is look at the data and this is the temperature. So it's Displaying 153, 153. So let's increase that value. The more you increase it, if you observe your serial monitor, it just keeps showing that value. So this is the value that's inside this temp status. So it's just displaying whatever value is there. So it just keep going. This is the value that's inside this temp status. So it's just displaying whatever value is there. So you just keep going. But when you exit, all right, see, if you hear now, you can hear that there's a buzzing sound, a very ugly buzzing sound. So the reason for that is that it will draw your attention. Nobody wants to hear kind of sound for long. So whenever the sound comes up, you just want to, what's happening, what's going on, want to do something about it. So when you exceed our threshold of 259, that's when the buzzer sound will start beeping. 
But if you reduce it, you see it has stopped because it doesn't that um, condition is no longer being met. So there will be no tone. Okay, and just try this. So your assignments will now be for you to add two LEDs to your project, to this particular project you just viewed. A red LED and a green LED. The red LED is going to come on when the temperature is too high, and then the buzzer is also going to come on when the, buzz, when the uh, temperature is too high. But when the temperature is normal or the temperature is okay, the green LED should just stay on. But when the temperature is too high, the green LED should turn off, and then the red LED should come on. But when the temperature is okay, the red LED should turn off and the green LED should turn on. And the buzzer should also come on when the temperature is high too. So you have to program that on your um, code here. It's already, the temperature is already done for you. It's just for you to add whatever you want to do inside the if statement and add your, um, your P mode, your variable pins, the pins, add some variables, put the pin values there, and then you're good to go. <laughs> Ciao.